Okay, so we have um, shingled this side of the roof up until the point where we have to start dealing with our valley here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start talking about how we um, kind of shingle both sides of the roof here um, at once to kind of deal with this valley. So uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna focus just on one side of the valley here. Um, and what I typically do, whatever surface is smaller, um, so we have a big uh, roof surface here, and we have a little roof surface with the dormer here. I usually do the little surface first, um, and then go ahead and overlap that little surface with the big surface. That's gonna make a little bit more sense here in a second. Um, but basically the reason why I do that is you're gonna have a lot more surface area of water coming down. Um, so you're gonna want that bigger area overlapping the little area. There's just gonna be less chance of water getting underneath this seam. Um, so I'll explain that again here in a second when we get to overlapping. But um, we're gonna go ahead and focus on this dormer part first. Um, so what I've done, um, you can see our current section of roof here is coming in um, and we've reached that point of having to overlap our shingles. So what I'm gonna do is shingle this whole side first. We're gonna overlap these shingles onto this side here. And then when we bring this side over, we're gonna do a chalk line and we're gonna have a nice clean line of overlap here um, for the shingles to overlap onto. So basically what I've done is um, underneath this first shingle, I have our starter strip, just like we did um, down below. I've ran that long, um, and then I've installed our first shingle here. Um, it just so happened that this one shingle here worked out to overlap just enough. Um, and what you kind of want to look for when you're overlapping shingles here, you have your valley tin here, and you wanna make sure that this um, top corner here overlaps the center of your um, valley by at least two inches or so. Um, you don't wanna have it on this side um, because then you're gonna have a seam somewhere in your valley. So as long as your top point here is a couple inches past your valley, um, your seam's gonna be past. So um, what I like to do is basically I do a reverse stairs. If you remember when we started shingling over here, um, we had a long part on the bottom, then we kept going gradually shorter and shorter so we could work with four rows or five rows at a time. I'm basically gonna do the same thing except I'm gonna start with a short row and keep getting longer because we're working up our valley. So first shingle's installed. I'm gonna go ahead and start a second shingle. And again, we're gonna be lining up with our grooves at the top of our architectural shingle here. Um, not really focusing too much of how much I have left here because I can trim a piece into that area. But I just wanna make sure that I have enough overlap up here in my valley uh, with this shingle. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on. I'm getting this nice and straight down here. I got plenty of overlap. And now I'm gonna go ahead and tack this into place. So when nailing your shingles in your valley here, you want to, you want to uh, be careful not to put any nails in this area where the valley flashing is. So out here where we have the rest of our shingle, we're gonna nail just like we normally would. So coming in that inch or two on the side, one right in the middle as long as it doesn't interfere with our valley and then split the difference. But now on this side, um, from this nail to over here, this whole area is our valley flashing. Again, we don't wanna puncture that because then water could get in there. Um, so what you do is I usually just push the shingle down as tight as possible. And then I'll come out here on this corner and I'll just put a nail right in the face. Now again, normally you wouldn't put any nails in the face of a shingle, but if you remember, uh, we're overlapping this um, onto this side of the roof. That way these shingles on this side can overlap this and you will never see any of these nails because they'll be covered up. Um, so this one is literally just to keep this shingle in place. Also, um, when we're nailing on our other shingles, we'll be nailing into the, um, into the nail strip 
So we'll be going through these shingles a few more times. That's why I just put that one right in the corner um, because when we overlap it, that'll help hold these shingles in place as well. So just get that one right in the corner there and then you can grab another shingle and go ahead and continue your stair process here. And notice. So now this side, I uh, couldn't quite get in the middle of the shingle because now we're in the va that valley territory. So I came just a little bit off and it doesn't hurt to go ahead and just put three nails in this little section. You don't want to put too few because then your shingles will fall off. And then again, I'll push the shingle down and nail it in the top corner here. All right, so we'll continue this on up our valley here until we get to the top and then we'll be able to fill in the rest. Um, but I just wanted to mention real quick about doing a stair pattern like this. Um, typically, um, we have such a short little run here. We only have like a five foot valley. Um, so we won't get off too much, but on a typical house, you might have, you know, a, a 15 to 25 foot valley that you're running along the whole uh, width of the house there. Um, so I recommend only doing about um, four or five courses of shingles at a time and then go ahead and finish off the rest of your um, run going this way. Um, the reason for that, when you continue to put these shingles up your valley like this, um, the shingle tends to run uphill um, because of the curvature of the um, valley. It's hard to get it exactly straight because you're laying it on two different surfaces. Um, so when you push that shingle um, of the previous course down, you're not going in a perfect straight line. Um, so if you're good, you can keep running these, but you'll keep an eye on this seam and make sure that it stays parallel with your um, drip edge here. Otherwise, if you keep running, your shingle will, this is way over exaggerated, but you'll, your shingle will keep running up like this. And then as you get to the peak on a long run, it'll just appear that your shingles are running down this um, width of your house. So only do about four or five um, courses and then finish them out. And then if you have any shingles that are running up, you can snap another chalk line and correct that um, issue. And then continue in another four or five courses with a stair pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these um, tapered or stared pattern up the um, valley here and then I'll finish um, filling in this section and then we'll come back to deal with the overlapping onto this part of the roof. Okay, so we went ahead and finished our small side of the dormer here. Um, again, we went all the way up and we overlapped onto our larger portion of the roof here. So now what we're gonna do is continue to roof this section um, and then I'll show you how to trim the shingles uh, right up the center of the valley here. So the first step to do that is to take a chalk line. You might not be able to see it on camera, but um, I have a blue chalk line going right up the center of this valley here. And that's gonna be our guide to um, cut our shingles. And I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Um, so what I've done um, to this point here, I started another stair pattern here behind me. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and continue shingling up to our valley here. So we have our next shingle. We got a couple things going on here. So if I, continue my stair pattern here. I'm gonna start running into our vent pipe here. And then I'm also going to start running into my valley here. So let's go ahead and take care of one thing at a time here. Um, what we're gonna do is this first row of shingles. Um, basically we wanna butt up to our pipe um, with shingle. And then we're going to go ahead and put this boot on. That's gonna overlap our shingles and then we'll be able to shingle up to our boot um, after or on our next course here. Um, so for this first row, all we have to do is trim just a little bit of this guy here. So all I do is mark the edges with my knife. And 
and then kind of estimate how much I need to take off here. Looks like I need to take about an inch or so down. So we can just cut this out quickly here. Test it to see if it fits. All right, that fits pretty good. Um, so that's all we have to do with um, this vent pipe for this first course here. Now we're gonna line up the shingle where it needs to go according to our reference lines here. All right, so now when we get to our valley, basically what we do is we have this chalk line here. So all we have to do is mark the top of our chalk line with a little nick and then mark the bottom of our chalk line with a little nick, which meets right in the middle here. Again, you wanna make sure that you're exactly where your shingle needs to be, um, where it's gonna lie when it's finished. Make those two nick marks. And now you can connect the dots with a straight edge. All right, so now you have a nice straight cut, and as you put it back into place here, you can see you run right along that chalk edge as you bring it down to where it belongs. So, as we keep layering this across here, as long as we follow our chalk line, doing a tick mark on the top of the piece and at the bottom of the piece, we'll end up with a nice straight uh, line on up the valley here. So I'm gonna go ahead and nail this piece into place. Okay, so um, went ahead and put that first piece in. Now we're gonna come in here and start dealing uh, with this vent pipe a little bit more. Um, my general rule of thumb here is you want to basically put as much shingle up to the pipe as possible with um, having uh, your good showing face here. Um, so this one actually works out almost perfectly. Um, if you can get a whole um, reveal here underneath the pipe before having to cut into the good face, you can go ahead and run a row. Um, and what I mean by that, so uh, if we lined up our shingle here with our lip here, and our next shingle would overlap to here. I can fit this whole area underneath this pipe yet. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let's just say our course was a little bit higher and I only from, had from here to here. I would go ahead and put on the boot um, over this and then start uh, shingling around the boot. But you wanna get as much um, face underneath the uh, pipe as possible. So what we'll do with that then is go ahead and line up our edge so we don't have to measure. And we'll just make a tick mark on both sides of our pipe here for reference so we can cut it. All right. And then for measurement, I usually just line it up with the edge here and make a tick mark on the side. Um, so I can just bring that line across. So, I know um, my tick mark is there, so I'll transfer that over. Here's my two tick marks here. I have about a half inch. I'll just kind of eyeball that here and make a score so I know just to come down that far. And then you can make two nice straight lines coming down from your tick marks here and cut this section out.
Okay, I just scored it there. I don't want to be cutting on my shingles. So, move a little section off here and cut that section out. All right, so went ahead and cut this piece out. Um, just got around the pipe here. Again, I'm not worrying too much about above the pipe here because we're gonna put this boot on here. So, got it lined up um, straight here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a nail in here. And get this guy nailed off. Okay, now after this is nailed off here, we have our aluminum boot here. So it has a rubber gasket on here. Um, this is a two inch pipe. Um, so this hole that they have already made here is for inch and a half to two inch diameter, which is what we have. And then they have a larger um, perforated line here for a three inch diameter. Um, if you do have a three inch diameter, all you have to do is just grab this little part here with the pliers and rip it and it'll tear right around that ring. Um, but don't tear it if, if you don't have a three inch pipe because then this boot won't be any good. Um, this gasket basically seals around this pipe nice and tight. So if you look at it from the edge here, um, it follows the pitch of the roof. Um, so you don't wanna accidentally put it on backwards, otherwise it's not gonna fit right. You wanna go um, with it facing that pitch of the roof so it'll fit nice and tight. So all you have to do is just kinda work itself onto the pipe here and then slide it on down and now you can see as you push it down it'll seal around this pipe here and then basically as we put another row of shingles on here we'll cut around it and then any water that gets behind the shingles will now run out and run onto our good face of our shingle. Um, so the water just sheds away. Um, that's why I like to try to put as much of good showing reveal here as possible. It's okay to have this tin showing. Um, this is a little bit cheaper boot, but they do make black ones um, if you're concerned about seeing the boot itself. Um, and they can make them in other shingle colors as well. Um, but just for demonstration purposes, this one's easy to see. Um, so, what we'll do here is now that this guy is on, I'm gonna nail um, basically all around where the um, shingle will cover. So here's our reveal line down. I'm gonna go ahead and go above that line and nail this in place here. Doesn't take too many nails. You just want it to stay in place. And one at the top here. And now what we're gonna do is we have our next shingle coming in here. Um, and this cut, you wanna make a little bit nicer and take your time with it, because um, it's gonna be a finished cut. So, you can see we have a round edge here. Um, so what I like to do is just line it up to where it needs to go. And then I'm gonna mark my straight edges. And then I'm gonna kinda just eyeball um, on the back here, got a edge here, and I got an edge here, and then if you have a sharpie or pencil works, um, you can try to replicate that, uh, replicate that curve on the back and cut that out. So I'm just going to mark my height here. Now it goes that high. Okay, so two tick marks here, one here, one here. And all I'm gonna do is try to draw as closely as I can the same contour, and I'll cut that out. So um, one word of advice with this is you can always take more material off. So if you're not that great of an estimator or guesser with uh, contour here, um, try to go a little bit smaller, put it in place, and then you can 
trim off the extra while it's in place. It'll just be a little bit easier. Um, but if you do that, make sure you keep your knife away um, from any of this rubber gasket here because um, you don't want to poke a hole in it. Otherwise, your um, pipe will leak. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this out and try to get a nice tight fit. And then when it is a nice fit, we'll come back and I'll show you how it uh, goes in place properly. All right, so we got this piece in place. Um, we got a nice cut right around uh, the top of this boot here. And now we've continued uh, coming across. So the only other step to do uh, with this boot then is to run another row right above it here. Um, and it looks like we might have to trim just a hair off the bottom, um, but it might just lay nice and flat. But um, after, after this piece is on, uh, this boot is good to go. So again, if any water gets behind here, all it's gonna do is go right onto the flashing and then run off. Um, if, you, uh, if you put the nails all along here, there should be no need to have to put any nails on the bottom here. Um, again, they would be uncovered um, and you'd have to put some silicone over it and that's just not a very good weather um, seal um, on this flashing. So if you can avoid putting any nails on there, um, do it with covering it with the shingles. So, all right, um, I'm gonna show you one more um, piece in the valley here. So I have a full length shingle and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it up uh, as our um, shingles come across here. And with one more last view here, I'm gonna push that shingle nice and tight, make sure it's exactly where I want it. And then I'm gonna make a tick mark here on the bottom with my chalk line or where my chalk line's at. And one right on the top here where my chalk line's at. And then all you have to do then is connect those two lines with a straight edge. Make sure we know where they're at here. Okay. Okay, I just scored it. Oh, draw my line there. Go ahead and cut it down here. All right, so I have a uh, I have my piece here with that angle going up the valley. So since we marked it right on our chalk line here, as we put this into place now, we can see it's gonna line up right with our chalk line. Um, and you can see we start, we can have that finish edge now starting here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in place. And then we can uh, finish roofing this side here and as we walk over to this side of the roof You can see what a finished valley looks like here um, So we've come all the way up to the top here. We have a nice straight line with our chalk line um, Again, we have the larger surface area. Um, we're gonna have more rain on this side of the roof um, washing down so I have that overlap going on to the small side this side won't have nearly as much rain washing down, so there's gonna be less chance of that water getting up underneath this um, seam here. Um, and it's all the way up to the top, so it's ready for some cap shingles. Um, and that's what we're gonna do next. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish nailing off this side and getting it completely shingled, and then we'll come back and uh, do the cap shingles.